Okay, so a couple of things on Mitch Marner because I think he was a subject of ridicule in this game, and there is a um, a, a certain play surfacing on social media. Um, I won't lie; after the first period, I was like, I had a I had a tweet set up where it's like, if the Leafs even take a call from Marner in his camp this summer, they're fucking idiots. <laughs> I probably still feel that way. I, I, there's no solution in my world that it makes sense to bring back Mitch Marner, especially if what I've seen in Game One and Two is going to continue here in the first round. I'm sorry to say it, man. The guy is an unbelievable regular season player. He just, the fact that he needs to be with Austin Matthews to produce is, is lunacy to me, especially when you go into negotiations this summer and rest assured, I can tell you for a fact, he's going to ask for more than the 11-5 that Willie Nylander got. It's a whole surfacing conversation we're going to have throughout the playoffs, but enough is enough. Like it, it just ain't happening for Mitch Marner to play. Like I feel like I'm watching Groundhog Day every time I watch this guy play in the playoffs. I don't know if you read it the same way, but the lack of urgency, um, it's a different game too. Like for all the guys in the regular season, like Marner and Robertson, it's just a much yep. different game when the playoffs and it's just not conducive to their style and brand, unfortunately. No, you talked about it this morning on the morning show. I heard you bringing yeah. up Nick Robertson. These, these, um, I think the word you used was skill players. They're great to have, but those are not your driving players. The, those guys who fit that mold, the guys who play that way, they're just not your drivers. Like, you, at some point, no matter how much of a fan you are of the guy, you kind of got to yeah. take the step back and say, this guy's not the driving player. And that's when I, that was when my head almost exploded during the second intermission when I'm watching Domi, Bertuzzi, and Matthews. You know what? They got their deficiencies. Like, every yep. single line has them. It's going to happen. There are moments where you're going to sit there and say, why is Tyler Bertuzzi's ass, like, facing the wrong way and his stick's above his head and he's not wearing a glove? Like, it's going to happen. But you take the, the bad with the good because they bring so much positive chaos. Controlled chaos is what I've been calling it. And they create opportunities. They sustain pressure. And then I'm listening to the panel, and these guys are telling me, you got to put Mitch Marner back on the first line to get this guy going. Like, Nick, am I wrong or does his cap friendly not say he makes almost 11 million fucking dollars? Like, that's got to be yeah. the most insane argument I'm hearing. Like, you've got to get this guy going. No, there's no getting him going. You get going yourself. I can't have you riding coattails with other guys. Like, that can't happen. I think, I hope this is proof this, again, I hope it, it turns around for Marner. I think most notably he made a great defensive play late in the game with like 20 seconds left to get the puck out of the zone. Boston was coming. Like they wanted that goal so bad and you're going to get that. And I, 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 I think guys should be commended for making those tough plays. Even David Camp, I know I had the over in the game. I was a little disappointed at the side of the post, but hey, they got the victory. <laughs> so we, we will give some credit there, but I think you're so right. Like you need to deliver. Yeah. Like plain and simple. Uh, John Tavares gets a lot of heat, dude. I thought he was a fucking dog in this game. Okay. I agree. Like if, if you look at the resume and the track record of John Tavares, it's starting to pile up in terms of big fucking goals for this franchise. And I understand they've won playoff series victory in nearly two decades, but go look at the big goals. This team has scored the last couple of years. Uh, the hat trick, I think in game two last year against Tampa, the series clincher against Tampa, the goal tonight to get them back even in the game, especially after the Bertuzzi goal was called back. Like there's just a lot that's transpiring where it's like, holy shit, like you don't realize it, but John Tavares is scoring some big time goals for this team. So I think he deserves a lot of credit. I want to give a shout out to the PK as well, Zach. I mean that, that yeah. we can get into that too about composure. I think that's certainly a storyline as we move forward in this series and discipline. And the scary thing is it's like Tyler Bertuzzi who played for that fucking team last year. And it's like, I don't know what they were doing, World-class sell, as you referenced in our text on, on Brad Marchand's part, but they bear down, man. I, I think plain and simple, this team bared down and got the job done, and and that's been missing against Boston in recent series, so great to see. You know, for as bad as we felt on, on Saturday night, I think these guys deserve a lot of credit. I know we're piling up on Mitch Marner. The uh, Paul Marner uh, fan club is in the <laughs> no. chat right now. They're bitching at us, so be it. I thought he was dog shit in this game, and they pay this guy to to score and get points and be a difference maker, and he hasn't been any of those. And I guess he's reliant on the guy who scored sixty nine goals in the regular season. But hey, Austin Matthews, <laughs> man, like I really, I know a lot of sarcasm in there, but Austin Matthews, like that's another legacy moment for this guy, right? Like yeah. I, I think when you look at who needed to score that goal, it just felt like it wasn't going to be a bottom six guy. It, you know, maybe it was John Tavares, maybe it was Marner, 
but but for Austin Matthews to corral that puck, the pass that um, you know Domi made, it was very uh, reminiscent. You remember a couple of years back? I think it was Carlson to Mike Hoffman. Yeah, where he like it was an incredible pass. sauce. Yeah, <laughs> like it had that feel to it. But then like also the finish, like Lena Salmark, I thought was really really good in this game, and 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 ultimately I think great thing for Toronto. There's going to be second guessing in the Boston media over the next couple of days why they went with Linus Allmark after Swayman played in game one. But man, that that was an onion bag of a goal. Like that just <laughs> continues to build that resume in terms of of greatness for Austin Matthews. You love to see it. What would you call that? An onion bag of a goal? <laughs> yeah, onions, because you're crying, man. It leaves the opponent crying, buddy. It's a Chuck Swirsky special from back in the day when he called Raptors games. One of my favorites. I like that. I like that. Yeah, you send. He had Allmark in the shadow realm when he hit him with the little hesitation, oh, the head filthy, fake, dude. forehand, backhand, pulls it back to the forehand, goes Ted on him. Uh, I, I mean, I want to talk about Matthews here. We have a super chat. Um, we'll answer all these, and we've got a new little animation here to play tonight. So let's hit the super oh. chat, and I'll ask you about this. All right, there you go. Super chat animation, little audio going. The whole nine, buddy. The whole nine. That's what you get here on the After it. Dark show. Uh, okay, Nate92 <laughs> says, huge game from Maddie, Sammy, and Domi. Seeing the best player actually be the best player is a good sign. Uh, I kind of want to key in on the last part of that. Seeing the best player actually be the best player is a good sign. The one thing that I've talked about over and over again, you guys have me on your show on Friday morning. I had kind of brought it up there. I've heard you talk about this nonstop. And it's like, we can talk until, you know, our faces turn blue about the depth. Are they going to have the depth? Are you going to have guys contributing uh, down in the bottom six? Are the Is the D good enough? Is the goaltending good enough? That's fine. Let's assume everything is average, Okay. If your best players are not the best players, or at least not the players that we all expect them to be, you are stuck up shit's creek without a paddle because those guys are making that much money, are supposed to be driving the team as much as we like all anticipate them to. You're you got two on the uh or you traditionally have had two on the top line, two on the second line. You've at least broken it out here. But if those guys do not play to their capabilities, you're gonna be fucked. And we've seen it year after year with this group. I've been so impressed with Austin Matthews. He didn't get the results in game one. I think he was around it. I think he created chances. I think that's partially why you and I walked away with that little bit of PTSD of like, well, he created chances and didn't score. But then here tonight, you win 3-2. Austin Matthews is in on all three goals and he scores mm -hmm. the winner. Like, yeah. can you even begin to put into words for even yourself just like how important that is or how different that feels to see him just be like, nope, fuck it. I'm taking over this game. You can, but I I, I would loop in Tavares into that combo too. Fair. Like you, you need games like this where it's like your best players are your best players. And I think so far through uh, two games, I, I think it's been pretty much a wash, right? Where you look at Pasternak, his night, Marshawn's been awfully quiet. And I think you just look at Matthews like you need these types of games. I think he had one last year as well. It was the 4-1 game where I think Kerfoot scored an OT where it was like Matthews yep. uh, had a couple of monster goals in the third period with his DNA were all over the comeback. Like you need that. And again, I look back at previous postseasons. I've really never questioned Austin Matthews. Like I think he still brings that that like physical component that unfortunately Mitch Marner, that's just not his brand. That's not his style. It's not his game. So you notice it a bit more when he's not producing. But I think the last couple of years specifically, like, you know, Austin Matthews has done his thing offensively. The supporting cast has been nowhere to be found. Like, I think you should do a smelling salt just for the Maple Leafs scoring a third <laughs> goal tonight, dude. Like, this this is like games in the making. I can't believe it took nine games to least to score more than two goals. You sort of feel for their goalies. Like, yeah. Samsonov was another big story in this game for, you know, the heat he's taken the last couple of days. I thought he made some monster saves in the third period second period as well but as you mentioned it i think you nailed it off the top it's like your lunch pail type victory on the road like you it doesn't matter how you get the job done just get the fucking job done like right like that's all we're talking about now we're talking about a maple Leafs victory that this whole ch series has changed from being down two nothing to one one and now you have home ice for game three and four and i think if it goes according to plan you can grab a three one lead so like it's yeah. a check mark i think if you're sheldon keith and i i think the biggest positive like they haven't even played their best game yet. Like, yes. I know it's a big if. Like, what if Mitch Marner gets going? 
what if Willie Nylander can return from Mexico or wherever he is right now? Like, who knows what's going on with that guy? But, like, there's a lot of ifs. If that can transpire, I'm certainly feeling much better about this team than I, I was, say, 49 minutes ago. So that's great. Make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. We got long form interviews, we got clips, we got epic rants by Jay Rozo. We simply have it all. And don't forget, you can find out much more at theleafsnation.com. Thanks so much for watching.